Wanting to be liked means being a supporting character in your own life, using the cues of the actors around you to determine your next line rather than your own script. It means that your self-worth will always be tied to what someone else thinks about you, forever out of your control. I am tired of faking confidence or being told that my lack thereof is a fault when it seems to me the most natural reaction I could possibly have to the lifelong feedback women are given. I don't want to be confident or inspirational and I don't really want to buck up anymore because the faking takes more energy sometimes than the work itself. Value yourself for what the media doesn't, your intelligence, your street smarts, your ability to play a kick-ass game of pool, whatever. So long as it's not just valuing yourself for your ability to look hot in a bikini and be available to men, it's an improvement. Social media is not just another way to connect feminist and activist voices, it amplifies our messages as well. The only purpose of an engagement ring is to show you, belong, to someone, and your man makes bank. You're not too fat. You're not too loud. You're not too smart. You're not unladylike. There is nothing wrong with you. If feminism wasn't powerful, if feminism wasn't influential, people wouldn't spend so much time putting it down. Wedding fever is one of the scariest diseases I have ever seen. And really, how insulting is it that to suggest that the best thing women can do is raise other people to do incredible things. I'm betting some of those women would like to do great things of their own. Making women the sexual gatekeepers and telling men they just can't help themselves not only drives home the point that women's sexuality is unnatural, but also sets up a disturbing dynamic in which women are expected to be responsible for men's sexual behavior. A high school teacher once told me that identity is half what we tell ourselves and half what we tell other people about ourselves. But the missing piece he didn't mention, the piece that holds so much weight, especially in the minds of young women and girls, is the stories that other people tell us about ourselves. Those narratives become the ones we shape ourselves into. They're who we are, even if so much of it is a performance. I think that online harassment has become so ubiquitous on the internet that a lot of women do feel safer, whatever that means, in spaces where they know like people are not going to bother them in that kind of way. If your husband is cheating on you, it doesn't mean that you need to get prettier, it means he's a scumbag. I think the biggest obstacle I still have to overcome is myself, and just kind of struggling every day with what to do with the work and where to go next. Feminism isn't simply about being a woman in a position of power. It's battling systemic inequities, it's a social justice movement that believes sexism, racism and classism exist and interconnect and that they should be consistently challenged. According to the virginity movement, men have no self-control when it comes to anything sexual. You have to have your personal life, and at the end of the day I think what people forget, especially when you're online, is that you're a person too, right? and that you're not this ideal of feminism, that everything you do like feminism just like falls in your wake. Yes, the more successful you are, or the stronger, the more opinionated, the less you will be generally liked. All of a sudden people will think you're too braggy, too loud, too something. But the trade-off is undoubtedly worth it. 
power and authenticity are worth it. There's going to be biological differences between the genders. There's going to be biological differences between two women or two men. There's biological differences between all of us. My concern is, why are we so concerned about it? When are we going to realize that hating other women, no matter how much money they have or how far they've fallen, is just as bad for ourselves as it is for anyone else? Social expectations about what constitutes a good or a bad mother haunt every decision, and the rise of the parental advice industry ensures that moms and dads feel inadequate at every turn. I think that we're our own worst enemies in a lot of ways, especially when it comes to doing work where you're criticized a lot or doing work where there's a lot of hater directed at you, and to not constantly second-guess yourself. If you go to places like YouTube, it's a cesspool, and a lot of the comments are really horrifying and misogynist and harassing. You come to a point where you give up on holding yourself to a perfect feminist ideal, it just feels stifling. I do think that we have this incredible opportunity because being online, the internet is a relatively new space, we do have this incredible opportunity to change that dynamic, to make sure that women are present in all sorts of spaces, not just women-only spaces. Ignoring men, whether romantically or rhetorically, is existential violence to them. It's time to teach our daughters that their ability to be good people depends on their being good people, not on whether or not they're sexually active. Valenti, born November 1, 1978, was raised in Long Island City, Queens, in an Italian-American family. She graduated from Stuyvesant High School in New York City in 1996 and attended Tulane University in New Orleans for a year. And then transferred to the State University of New York at Albany, graduating in 2001 with a bachelor's degree in journalism. In 2002, Valenti received a master's degree in women's and gender studies with a concentration in politics from Rutgers University. Jessica Valenti is an American feminist writer. She was the co-founder of the blog Feministing, which she wrote for from 2004 to 2011. Valenti is the author of five books. Full Frontal Feminism, 2007, He's a Stud, She's a Slut, 2008, The Purity Myth, 2009, Why Have Kids, 2012, and Sex Object, A Memoir, 2016. She also co-edited the books Yes Means Yes, Visions of Female Sexual Power and a World Without Rape, 2008, and Believe Me, how Trusting Women Can Change the World 2020. Between 2014 and 2018, Valenti was a columnist for The Guardian. She is currently a columnist for Medium. 2010, Independent Publisher Book Awards for Gold, The Purity Myth, How America's Obsession with Virginity is Hurting Young Women. 2011, the Hillman Prize, Blog for Feministing. 2011, The Guardian, Top 100 Inspiring Women. 2014, Planned Parenthood Federation of America, Media Award for Commentary at The Guardian for The Body Politic column. Ibis Reproductive Health, Evidence in Activism Award. Choice USA Generation Award, 